In this video, I want to demonstrate how our application that we call the H3J Wirecast Remote actually interfaces to Wirecast. Now, this is required to interface between our hardware switching device and Wirecast because Wirecast's API is something that's done locally um, via objects into itself, so you can't do it over the network. So because of that, we had to build our own uh, little client application that communicates with Wirecast and allows our switcher to communicate to Wirecast via this, well, I guess we call it a bridge. So what I have right now is I have Wirecast right here and I have our application right here. And I'm going to focus mostly on this, but I do want to demonstrate how these are connected together via two-way. So I'm going to come into Wirecast and I'm going to um, change what shot is selected. So look, if you look right here in the active shots, and this may not be in the final release version, this is mainly for us for debugging, but if people like it, we can leave it there. You can see we have blank shot, blank shot, A10, blank shot, blank shot. So if I come in here and I change this, you see now it says right here, uh, Mike. And then we come over here and it says there's the Bob. So you can see it's changing what's on each layer. I can come in here and preload the ad and it says ads on there. So you, it's live updating what is in each shot. So because of that, we can take and, come and determine what should be in preview right now. So we can determine what to send back to the switcher as far as what's either in preview or what's live. So um, Wirecast itself doesn't have the ability to for me to request what's, what is the tally information. Basically, I have to kind of figure it out. Uh, something we have requested, but it's not in there yet. So we are trying to figure out based on if you have auto live set or not, that when you click on these, where what state it's in. Now, if we go from the switcher side, we always know where we are because we tell it what to do. And even if it's not auto live, we, and we go to cut, we know you're putting it in cut. So if you're going from the switcher point of view, it's always accurate. It's just whenever you're in here making changes in Wirecast. The other thing is if we hit record, I want you to see right here we have our record timer at the top. And uh, if we hit record, you immediately we'll start counting up. So we tie directly into Wirecast and get back status immediately. That's how we can get back to our control surface, what's going on. So let me go ahead and stop record. But where I want to focus is right here, because this is how you configure this for all these different functions that we have. Uh, I do want to show that we have different um, profiles and you can easily pick a different profile just by picking on the list and that profile is loaded that quickly. I'm going to go back to test 99 and actually I want to change this to be um, a different one. All right so now that's loaded let's bring up my screen got a little bigger when I did that. It's a different profile that this is test 99 is attached to and it'll give you a, a quick demonstration so um, to go into configuration we go to this little icon right here which is the configure and when you click on that it's going to bring up another window which we can do configuration this can be very confusing because there's a lot of stuff in here so let's go through these five tabs first so in addition to being a bridge to our hardware controller we also can do keyboard shortcut transitions as well. So maybe you you need something to do some kind of keyboard shortcut, but you don't want to go, don't have the money, or you don't need uh, a control surface, a physical control surface. Maybe you just want to use a keypad or some kind of macro keypad. So what we do is, and this is what we call the hotkey setup. So we have hotkey shot setup and feature setup. So let's first look at the shot setup. So we have it set up in here. So you can have 40 different shots set up with different hotkeys. So you can see over here I have hotkeys 1, 2, enter, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. And we can set up what each of these does. So first thing you do is for hotkey 1, you pick what layer you want. So we want layer 3, which is our shot layer. And then we click on the shot name and pick what shot name we want to bring up. So let's say we want to go to uh, Skype 1. So we have Skype 1. And then we can add a different lower third. So in this case, maybe I want to put me on Skype 1. So I do this for up to 40 of these. Right here I can set what hotkey I want. This checkbox says is it an auto take or basically something is saying um, auto inside of Wirecast. We'll do that for you. And you can also have it learn MIDI commands. 
So in our case right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say I wanted to auto take to Skype one, which is just going to be a computer screen right now, and put up my lower third. So I'm going to set up well, it's already set up right here, layer three. Let's see, this is button number seven. So one and seven will do me the same thing, except for one will have a lower third and one, one won't. So let's say this and just demonstrate this. So while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a one. And there you see is the Skype machine. And if I do seven, it is the Skype machine going to uh, Skype one, which actually has Bob's lower third on it. So. Uh, that was a bad example maybe, but that's my lower third, and then there is uh, Bob's lower third by hitting a 1 or 7. So let me see what other ones that I have configured in here. We can go and give you an example. Um, okay, well, 5 and 6 will play videos. Let's see, layer 3, we're going to go to the ATEM input without a lower third. And then 9 will go to the ATEM input with a lower third. So this will be, give you a, a really quick example, 8 and 9. All right, so now if I go to 8, you see I'm on the ATEM, and you see I'm in preview, and 9, I'm on the ATEM with me. So there you see it going back and forth, making keys 8 and 9. And you notice it didn't auto-take. So let's come back in here and look at this again. And if I come over here and I say, to auto take. Now if I do 8, there's 8, and then there's 9. So you can see very quickly how you can set up hotkeys to be able to control Wirecast. Alright, so the hotkey feature setup are for additional things. The take, the record, and the broadcast. So I have RMB set up for record and broadcast, and space set up for the take button or the go button. And if you saw a member from the old Wirecast, it's called go. It's the right arrow here. So these are set up just like that. Again, we can do minis. And the additional features over here don't make sense as far as auto take because this is not a take situation. All right, and then the control surface channels is where our hardware controller comes in. So our hardware controller by the, the one we're putting out right now is only eight buttons per channel, but we have other ones coming out that have more than that. In fact, we have some coming out that have quite a few more than that. And you'll see in the case of the configuration, this may give you an idea. We have one coming out that's 24 channels on, in, a, in a row, so it's on its way. But the one we're wrestling with right now is only eight. So again, we do the same thing we do with hotkeys, except instead of hotkeys, we know this is button number one, button number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there is no auto take because this is either a preview or a program, depending on which row you hit. So we are currently demonstrating how to configure Wirecast so that it, our controller is done in basically what's considered a two bus. So you have your preview and your program. So we come in here, we pick what layer we want, and we can pick what shot we want. Right there, so we had box one, and what do we want for a lower third, if any? So these, these are all blank shots. So if you watch the other videos, you see me going to shot five, and my lower third comes up right here. That's because my lower third's told to come up with this one. One of the things you'll notice here is we have all four of these being ATEM. If you watch the, the setup video, we are using channels four through six on the ATEM for physical cameras connected to the ATEM. So we always want to go to the ATEM when we press that button when the switcher, the ATEM switcher itself is going to make the video switch. But what we are doing is we're overlaying lower thirds automatically on each shot. And again, the current switcher only has eight uh, channels, and you can see we are going to have quite a few more of these in time. Now, the one thing I didn't really show is I always pick layer three. If you go to layer one, for example, here's what I have in my layer one. So just by changing this layer, we'll reload this list with the actual shots that are available to you. There's no need to remember the names and type them in or spell them correctly or anything like that. It's all done out of a pull down list. And then we have control service special. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So you can run in a two bus mode though with the preview in the program, which is traditional. However, with Wirecast, you don't have to do that. We can set up these buttons. So right now we have this set up for uh, 24 buttons, but we're expanding this down to 40 for the reason of 
the switchers that we have, the C200, actually has up to 40 buttons that are available to you to program. So you don't have to run it in a two-bus mode. You could have every button be independent. Now, in our case here, we this basically the way it works is the first button, the top row, left, is one, and the next one to the right is two. So it's top, down, left, to right, and we number our buttons and we keep on going. So you'll see here that the top left button, which I kind of showed yesterday in the videos that I was creating, is lit because I was recording in Wirecast. So, and it's a toggle, and the record can be either start, stop, or toggle. So it does the opposite of whatever it's doing in toggle. Timer is either start, stop, clear, or toggle. And you see right here I have timer one set up for this one, and I have it to clear, so I can start and stop it with this one and clear it with this one. And here I have timer two, start and stop. This was clear, but the other week we did a demonstration of a video we wanted to include in Wirecast, so we went to the action of media, and then we picked what media we wanted to play, which comes out of the layer one. And you see these last four buttons are all set up as media that plays directly back. The other options you have in here, and we have go, we have broadcast, which works like right record, so um, if we go to broadcast, you see that this button now comes, this list comes up as a selection, and we can toggle start or stop for broadcast. It's record, and now we have shot preview, so again, you can do preview if you want to for certain things, and what you do with that is you say shot preview, what uh, shot do you want out of layer three, and if you want a lower third out of lower, out of the uh, layer one. So that's what's considered shot preview. We have shot go, which basically takes um, this, whatever we have here, and this, and is like hitting the on air or the uh, program button for this. So shot go, where shot puts things, shot preview puts things into preview, shot go puts it directly on the air based on what you set there. We can change the transition speed, so the, the speeds available in Wirecast are fast, fastest, fast, normal, slower, slowest. So you can set up a couple of these. You can set up one for fastest, you can set up one button for normal, and you can program the buttons that work however you want if you use the transition speeds a lot. So in this case, let's go back here to go. I'm going to look at this. Uh, you can specify just a lower third, and what you're going to notice is that we gray out the selection, and it's just a lower third, and it says they toggle on and off. So that's for the lower third. Here's the media we talked about before. You can see in this list, we see all the media that's currently in, in layer one. Uh, we can take a snapshot, and basically there's no options for snapshot. You press the button, it takes a snapshot. Then we have Fade to Black, which is something we've created. Basically what it does is it puts all layers into a blank shot. And there is no Fade to Black option in Wirecast, so we simulate that function just by putting all layers to a blank shot. And again, it's just a single button that's on or off. It's toggles on or off. We can mute the audio output, so you can put a mute button on the, on the board if you want. And then we have our timers that we have in our system. And you can either start, stop, clear, or toggle, which we showed you right up here. And there's two timers, so you can pick one or two. And there is a do nothing. And then there's this media load, which this is a feature we're still working on. But uh, our goal is to be able to load media from a, a disk or direct location and be able to put it into the preview ready to go. To, so you can hit go, it loads right up. So that's the last thing I'm working on. So those are all the options you have when you program each individual button. And like I said, you, you don't have to do anything over here if you don't want. You can leave these all uh, empty and nothing will happen. So what happens when you press a button on the controller for Wirecast is it sends to this software that you pressed a button and this software determines is that button a channel button? And, is it, uh, and if it is, it looks in here to see what to do. But then it also goes and says, okay, that what's the action I want for that button to happen? And that's where this comes in right here. Is So you basically can sign up two options. If you wanted to do two different things, you could put an, something in the channel and something in the special button area, and it would, both would function. I don't know what the outcome of that would be, and I probably would, don't recommend that. But this gives you the flexibility of running Wirecast in, on the control service in two different modes, one in traditional mode and one in any mode, any kind of design that you want. You could have every single button do something completely different on the control surface, or you can do it in traditional mode with some additional user buttons that are programmable. So um, that is pretty much the walkthrough of how to configure all of this stuff. 
And uh, on this screen, I did mention before, we do have um, right here the timer. You can, you can manually start and stop them right here. You can see I just started that timer. I can stop it. This can all be done from the control surface. There's clear. So you can use these timers in any ways you want. The record timer, though, is only for recording. As soon as you hit the record button, it will... Um, take off and start counting up on this. Down at the bottom, you also see a, an area where it says active connections. Now right now, that we don't have the control surface connected to this because our last video demonstration we did was actually with uh, vMix. But this will show you all the IPs and you can have multiple these control surfaces running at one time and they all communicate just fine. Uh, this software is what's controlling them. So they all talk to this and then this sends out to all these connections when something happens either on Wirecast or another controller makes a change. That all happens uh, the same. Now you see right here we also have Auto Live, which is currently turned off in a transition speed. If we went in to uh, Wirecast and changed our transition speed to slowest, you'll see now it says slowest right here. And if we went in and turned uh, Auto Live on, you see Auto Live is on. So uh, we generally recommend you run with Auto Live off, and we could just do the live for you. Uh, otherwise, when you put something in preview, it's going to take and it's just going to go. So it's our recommendation that you make sure Auto Live is turned off. And if you have it set up in the options to go Auto Live, we do that for you. And there's no need to worry about the, sta the state of the Auto Live. The only other thing that's in here is if there's any information that gives us the current version and uh, the ability to um, create a new profile. So this is how you can create a profile. And this is how you can open a profile right here. So we can do um, profiles or quick loads. You don't have to come over here to open it. It remembers the last 20 that you opened, and you can come down here real quickly and change it. So if I go to test two, uh, which is basically a permanent blank one that we mess around with, and we come in here and we look, we see all the options that we had set up are now gone. And I can just as easily come in here and say that I want test 99, and I'll go look at the configuration. Just like that, you can see we're back to where we were before. And also, I want to know that you know that the hotkeys in the surface control, the control surface, work at the same time. So you could be close to the keyboard and still use the buttons. In fact, that's a great demonstration of how quickly these things interact together. Is by using the hotkeys when you're in in here and have the control surface sitting next to it. You can punch the hotkeys and the control, control surface moves right with it. So it's very quick to update uh, as far as that goes. All right, that's all I want to demonstrate was the software interface for the Wirecast remote software from H3J.